Hey kids, can you believe it? This is the last new video of new material for this class. It has went by so fast. In this class, usually we've moved on to some Alice and some Java. And we've even done a little Lego programming. Since we didn't do any of that, we're gonna do something a little different with our scratch. What I want you to do with your final project is I want you to remix one of your existing codes into a new type of game. This means unlike your first final project where you created an entirely new game, I'm gonna actually have you remix the code to do something else. It's probably a little easier if we see it. We have our old friend here. When we click on it, we try to dodge the balls. The little guy goes towards the mouse and the speed is based how long you hold the mouse down. What I did was I took this theory and I remixed it into a golf game. This right here is my mini golf code. It is almost identical to the drag and drop code, except now we incorporated some other things from some codes. I took our bouncing off the racing game that we just did. That goes for our windmill. And then when it hits a certain sprite, it'll disappear. You also see I have a count because it's not a good mini golf game unless you know how many times you try to putt putt. How do you play? Well, once you click and hold, it'll go towards your mouse. You click and hold somewhere else and it goes in. Took me two times to get it in. If you hit the corner over here, It'll just throw you to a random spot. Same with the windmill. So I can make different types of traps on my golf course. If I go ahead and look at this code, you will see it's the same exact code from the drag and dodge game, except I added a counter over here and then I just added some different sprites for it to hit. That's it. I'm going to show you how I coded this up real quick, but you do not have to do a golf game. If you cannot find any inspiration anywhere else, you're more than welcome to do this. But I would encourage you to look at some of the other types of codes we've done during this semester and try to do something a little different. Remix it into a new type of game. First thing I did here, kids, was I just made a copy. How you do that, you just go File, Save as a Copy, and it'll create a different copy of the game. You don't want to write over your existing one because that was good code and you want to keep it. First thing we're going to do here is just to set up our game. I'm going to get rid of my dodgeball sprite because I no longer need it. This one, since this is going to be a mini putt game, I am going to change the costume. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose a costume. And it's going to look similar, but I'm just going to use this ball here. And I'm going to shrink this ball down a little. Maybe a little smaller. We might come back to that. I don't need this anymore. This is going to be my golf ball. You can get a much nicer one on a line. I am just using this one for our school spirit. That's our golf ball. Let's go ahead and do another sprite. Let's do our uh, hole. So I'm just going to use a circle and I am not going to do an outline and I want to do a black. Now, I am not a good golf player. In fact, I've never played real golf in my life, just putt-putt golf. So I'm going to make my hole a little bigger because, well, I'm probably going to be really bad at this game. We can also load in any images we want. I'm going to load in my windmill right here. On this one, I have these little weird things over here. So I'm going to go into costume 
increase this a little and I'm just gonna erase some of this background that was a little too far there let's try that again now I can turn this smaller obviously get a finer little erase into there I'm just gonna get as close as I can really just wanted to get that part out there we'll come down here for the windmills the closer you get the better it looks because it doesn't look like the balls going behind something doesn't look like one of those bad clip art videos that I post all the time almost done here and the last little part is all this right here After that, I just want to resize it up. And I want to start just moving these around to something. So my game's going to be pretty basic. I kind of want it lined up like that. Next thing I need my edges. I'm going to make this a sprite and I'm going to paint this as well. This is just going to be a line. We're gonna make this line 14. Let's see how well we did this over here. Oh, that's almost perfect. Let's increase this just a little. Move that down. This is gonna be our one side here. I'm gonna call this my left edge. Use my camel case maybe try to spell it right I'm gonna duplicate that and this one is going to be called right edge and we'll move this one over here now if I wanted to make this a little more putt putty I could go to my costume here we can drag a rectangle that's kind of green I don't want an outline on this either. Let's make sure we move this in a little more. I'm going to make mine go right to the edge there. And there. This line also should go up just a little. Match that other one. And my windmill looks like I missed some parts here. Well, let me go in and clean that up because all oh, that's pretty obvious. And up here, let's just make sure we get those points. That looks fairly okay. You should probably clean yours up a little better. But for this, this looks pretty good. Well, let's go ahead and take care of the code. A lot of this is pretty easy. On the event this is clicked, I just want this to go to this location right here. Same with these. When the green flag is clicked, I just want it to go to that location and same over here. So on this, it just says go to location. We should do it for our last one here too, our little putt putt hole, and go there. That just ensures nothing gets messed up. For this one, we wanna change that location. So I'm just gonna slide in this number and that number. I'm actually gonna keep all of this here. The only thing I wanna take out is this part right here, the time part, because we don't need that. What we needed to do is just bounce off of a sprite there, or we need it to disappear into that hole. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this variable because we don't need time anymore. We do need a new variable, and that is going to be the number of shots. Or we could call it putts, whatever you want. Where you put your putts is kind of up to you. 
probably best to keep it out of the way of the hole or where the ball's at. You can put it wherever you want. I'm gonna put mine in my corner right here. I'm gonna get rid of this code. And now we are just going to deal with the counts first. So the counts is pretty easy. We've done this a bunch of times. We are going to set the count to zero, the putts to zero when we go there. And how we're gonna count it is on the event forever, if our mouse pointer is down, so if it's sensing the mouse is down, we are gonna add one to the count. Now, if you go here, it's gonna count it for every second it's down. So if we hit start and I click here, that's really not 21 putts, is it? So we're just gonna put a simple little wait block into here. And we're just gonna wait for a second. So that means the user can't go ahead and hit a bunch of little things in it. Now, they can cheat and move it around a little like that. So you can change it to a half a second if you want. Then if they hold it a little longer, then they'll get charged for two putts. So that's just a little way in there. Let's go ahead and take care of our boundaries because it's not very fun if we can just roll over everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another if block. And this one, we're gonna do it with our left edge and right edge. Well, look at this. We don't have these names right, kids. Windmill and hole. This is gonna help us down the road here. We're gonna take care of our edges. So if touching our left edge here, we are going to do our good point in direction. So we're going to motion, point in direction. We're gonna do our usual little math here where we're gonna change it. So we're gonna do it whatever direction we're in, we're going to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And then for some fun, let's just move it 20 steps. I'm gonna duplicate this because I wanna do this to the right edge as well. Let's put our code in there and let's just try it out. There you go, it's going to hit it and it's gonna bounce it off or bounce it. it, really doesn't matter because at the end of the day what we really want it to happen is it just to cost us a stroke of hitting it. Let's see what happens when we take that move out. As you can see, without the move, it just goes right through it. We're gonna do the same thing with the windmill. So we're just gonna go down here to a windmill and put that in. And we're gonna do our final one now, which is going to be the hole. But on this one, what we wanna happen is we just basically want it to hide. So I'm gonna to go to our looks and I am going to hide it. As always, if we hide something, we have to show it at the beginning. So I have to put a show up there. Finally, we're just going to put a if on edge bounce command in here in case we hit anything else, it'll go through. Let's go ahead and hit. Look at that, putts off. Goes there, took me four putts to get in. Try again. 
in there. It looks like my time's a little quick on that, giving me an extra stroke there. So I'm gonna change it back to one. So remember, you gotta hold it down. This is kind of mimicking how hard you hit a ball so you could hit it easy or hard as you go in. That's a little better on that one because we're really trying to make it feel like a golf game. So that's it, kids. That's pretty much it. We just really went through our code here and added some different touching bounce off of, but it's primarily the same game as our drag and drop game. Pretty neat. Let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the requirements for the project. What do you have to do for this project? Well, the point of this is to create another game out of something you've already created. So the point is to reuse code. That means to turn it in, I'm gonna need to know what you remix. So I would love a screen that just says, I took this game and remixed it into this game. I would like a screen explaining your game so I know how to play it. When you do remix, one of these projects has to be a game we've already done into a new project. If you can't think of anything and you want to do the golf game, you have to have at least three courses. Each course must have some obstacle, some extensions to the golf game. You could keep score, music, different clubs give you different speeds and maybe multiple types of traps or obstacles. Again, remember the point of this, to remix something you've already done, to reuse code. Doesn't have to be anything crazy extravagant, I just wanna see how creative you are. This project is going to be due Friday, May 22nd, but remember the week of the 18th through the 22nd, you are going to be going into school, picking up stuff. There's going to be a lot happening that week. So we're basically taking this project, extending it over, and making it our final project. That's it, kids. That's the class. Hopefully you've had fun coding, you've learned some new things, and you can apply those skills to some other parts of your life. We'll have another video wrapping up the class. But I just want to say congratulations, kids. That's it. I can't wait to see what you remix and code. Good luck.